micron meter test. So since I'm through the previous videos, you already know what's going on here. Now we're up to the next step and I decided to throw in the micron meter for you guys. So right now I'm isolated. I'm performing the vacuum through the high side only. I turned off the low side valve. I unscrewed and disconnected the low side fitting from the vehicle. So this is at atmosphere because I, I took it apart. That's why it's at basically zero PSI. I attached an attachment on here that has a core depressor like what I used on the high side over here. Even though somebody else already retrofitted this system over to 134, there was no 134 fitting. I don't care if the systems have 134 fittings because I use a refrigerant identifier on every system I touch. So I always know what refrigerant in there, whether they have fittings or not. I never trust what's in there in the first place because there's too much mixed and messed up gas. So that's irrelevant whether there's fittings or not. It's whether a shop has a refrigerant identifier or not is the question. If a shop doesn't have a refrigerant identifier shop, they're not a shop. They're just pretending. They're just guessing. Um, and we're going to sleep here. Let's wake back up. And I don't need the Bluetooth. Should I use the Bluetooth? I'm not sure. It runs my battery down a lot though. Okay, so let's turn off the high side. I'm going to turn off the high side so I have only vacuum in the manifold. We are going to read the vacuum and make sure I have no really big leaks inside all these places that could leak. Everywhere there's a joint, there could be a leak. So now let's open up the vacuum just into our hose and watch our uh, fitting there. Oh, and we have to open up the core suppressor. So right now I have vacuum all the way up to this point. You see it's still high, not until I screw this in and I depress the valve core inside will it open up. There it goes. So now we're drawing vacuum up the gauge and just in this hose. So right now all I'm doing is check checking my fittings from this o-ring, this o-ring, this o-ring, this o-ring. There's an o-ring up in this shaft, there's an o-ring here, a seal, a seal here. So I'm checking this out making sure it could go down. So let's see where it goes. And it's going rather slowly. I don't like how slow it's going. It should be much faster than that. Let me turn off the source of vacuum and see if we have a big leak. There should be a rise in the hose because the hose was, you know, contaminated by being used with refrigerant. Okay, it's off. Let's see where it goes. Let's see where it steadies out. Now, if I wasn't making a video and I just wanted to uh, keep on going, it's time to go to lunch and I'll just leave this on. And it's going up slow. But for the speed of the video, I'm gonna skip this process and not go any farther to see if there's leak because it's going up really slow. It's still, it's at 1600 microns, not 16,000. 17. So I'm going to bank off that it's moisture contamination and refrigerant contamination in my hose and hopefully not a leak in one of my connections to set up this little tree just so I can show you guys. So now let's do something else. Let's see what the vacuum is in the system. Now to see what the vacuum is in the system, I need to take the vacuum pumps out of the equation. To take the vacuum pumps out of the equation, I'm going to, see we're down to 300 microns right now, 200 and something, so we're pulling. I'm going to take the vacuum pump out of the equation by turning off the low side to this hose, so this hose is in the equation. This is the only thing that could mess up our readings, is this hose. Just the off-gassing in the hose will kind of screw us up because I don't have a valve to show you. Oh, yes, I do. Right? No, that'll... Yes, I do. Hold on. Let's get that back here. Hold on. Let's do this. Yeah, I just opened it back up. Pulling the micron gauge down here, I'm going to shut off the vacuum right here. And you'll see a little jump because there's air trapped in the valve when you change the air. So I'll shut that off there. So now I'm only right here. I'm only measuring between here and here and here. And you see a lot of jump off. But I'm not gonna, 
I'm not going to chase that. We're going to go into the system now. Now by me screwing this down, now we're going to look at the system. Boom. 21,000. And I have the high side off and I have the vacuum is open to the manifold but the high side is closed. This is closed right here so there's no vacuum going to the pumps there. So this is the vacuum that is trapped in the system. Now I'm going to open up the high side. We're going to read from the low side. We're reading right here. Our, our, our travel of vacuum is coming up here, going here, going up this way, coming up here to the meter. This is closed, so nothing is happening on the low side. I could finish closing the low side, but it will have no, no bearings, no change what's happening there. Now I'm going to open up the high side. So now I just opened up the high side. It's drawing vacuum on the high side, not through the low side, but we will see eventually the low side should go down. Let's see how long this takes. So it's pulling vacuum through the vacuum pumps, through here, through the high side, through the entire system. And the compressor is doing a fine job of not allowing vacuum to be pulled through the low side. And it appears the expansion valve is doing a really fine job of not allowing vacuum to be pulled from the high side fitting down there through the high side line through the condenser, through the, through the receiver dryer, to the expansion valve, the small orifice. And there it goes, it's finally getting there. Now, now it's going down. Did you see how long that took? It was rising first, and now we're going, because we have to take the long route. We're now taking pulling vacuum all the way from this high side discharge let's let's follow this route so you understand how far the vacuum has to travel to get to that micron gauge you see this pipe right here that's where i'm connected now let's follow that, that pipe let's see if we can follow it that pipe goes to the compressor just through this hose right to the back of the compressor right there so this is the high side pipe then it goes to the hose right here let's keep following it and it's going up and there's our fitting and that's where we're pulling vacuum so now let's keep following it up if you follow it up up there you see it going up there now I got to climb out and go to the top of the engine and we'll follow it from the other side so let's this is the long travel the vacuum has to take and I got a call Credential spam, but sometimes it's not. Hold on, sorry guys. Like air conditioning? Hello? It must be spam. Yep, spam. What a waste of my time. Um, let's get back here. Find that pipe. It's going up. Coming to this rubber hose shoot I just cannot see very well all right I'm having a hard time seeing stuff everything is in my way let's see if we can get this out of here well the rubber hose you see this rubber hose right here so it makes a 90 degree off of that pipe where this fitting is that my hose is on where my connector is it goes into a rubber hose then we follow the vacuum has to go along this rubber hose and it goes up to the top of the condenser the inlet of the condenser so the vacuum is pulling through this this pipe right here this pipe right here makes a bend and it goes right there and on the other side you can see the fitting if you get my hand in there 
where this fitting connects right here, this pipe, that's that black line going to the inlet. High pressure, hot gas goes to the top of the condenser. So it has to pull the vacuum from there. Then you see all these tube bends? That's a continuous loop, kind of like a semi serpentine It goes all the way. It's going to the furthest back pipe there. So it comes out on the back here and it loops down and it travels here. And now it's going to the other side. The vacuum has to go there. Then it hits this pipe right here and then it loops forward going to the front of the condenser pipe. Then the vacuum is pulling through here and this front pipe right here, right to this. Then it's looping around. So you see how long this uh, travel of refrigerant is? We're gonna follow this travel right to there, right to this point. Now it goes to the back of the condenser. So it's the pipe in the rear. And now it follows over here. Keeps on going, it's in the back, way in the back. And it's this pipe right back here. And then it goes down. It's still in the back. It just, and now it's traveling to the other side of the condenser. It's going this direction. And it'll keep following. And it's in the back. No, did I lose it? Uh, right right there and now it's coming uh there it goes this one right here it's coming to the front it just went up a little bit but to the front and when we come back down i think it comes out to this one down here but let's follow up here up here going forward to the front uh up here it loops down now it went to the front now you see how this goes now it's going to the back then it goes to the back it's the back it drops down it goes to the back again in the back back here it goes across then it comes up in the front and it just keeps doing that back and forth all the way. It's one continuous loop of pipe, but the way they have it arranged in the back and then to the front and the front and then it drops to the back, that's a long pipe. If you stretch that out, it's probably about 40 feet long. Then it comes all the way down to the very bottom after all that travel. We can see it right here. This is the last pipe. That's the last fitting right there. And then it hits this pipe going up right here where my finger is touching. And if you follow that pipe up, you could see it make a bend right here. So the vacuum is traveling in this direction going down, being pulled out this high side line right here through that fitting underneath. Now, this is the liquid line coming out of the condenser after you have your subcooled liquid at the very bottom, that subcooled liquid comes up this pipe and that subcooled liquid travels in this direction towards the receiver dryer. So now let's take a trip to the other side of the headlight. And as we get to the other side of the headlight, we see the receiver. And where is our, there's our pipe, okay. So here's our subcooled liquid right here where you can see, if you can see my finger. See my finger touching right there? That's the pipe coming out of the condenser, that's subcooled liquid. And that comes over here, comes underneath this water bottle, and it goes, you can see this pre um, temperature switch here for turning on the fan, and then here's the pressure switch. It goes into where the pressure switch is, and it goes into the receiver dryer, right there. Now it goes into the top of the receiver dryer, and then it goes, falls through the receiver dryer, through the pads, the felt pad filters. It goes through the desing material BBs. It goes through another felt pad and screen and it drops to the bottom of the receiver dryer. Then there's a straw from the sight glass and that sight glass has a straw that drops all the way down up to the very bottom of the receiver dryer right here. And then that liquid refrigerant makes its path up, along with the vacuum right now, to the sight glass. And then out of the sight glass, do you see that blue hose right there? That blue hose connects right there. And then the liquid refrigerant continues on, and right now we're drawing vacuum, and it keeps on going back. And that goes in through the firewall to crawl, and goes up to the HVAC box, to the expansion valve, meets the expansion valve. Then it's drawing the vacuum through that tiny, tiny little, tiny hole of the expansion valve 
through all the loops of the evaporator in the HVAC case and then comes back out of the evaporator to the low side pipe which is this big guy right here comes out of the evaporator in the section side right here is the section side and this goes all the way back and we're reading it right here it's also making a little bit of a travel over here a few feet it goes right here it goes right here and it drops right into the compressor right there so that is the travel and the length and distance that this these vacuum pumps are having to pull for this low side to read and we're down at 1900 microns and I don't have the low side on so let's close or what I'll do is I'll isolate the high side and turn it off so there'll be no hoses hooked up to the system, the system itself, by backing off the pressure tap on the high side fitting right here. So when I screw this, it removes my hose out of the equation because we're only drawing vacuum right through this point right here. See how I do this? This is allowing the valve core to come back and seal. So now there's no more vacuum being pulled through this fitting. The system is now completely isolated from the vacuum. So now we should see pressure decay of the micron meter. And there it goes. It's slowly going up. Now I don't have time to uh, hold this camera here all day long and uh, let you guys see how far it's gonna go up because I'm gonna remove this out of the system and I'm gonna turn the vacuum up and take vacuum from both sides because I'm still looking for a leak. And so let me open up over here on the low side. I don't have time yet to give you a tutorial on micron gauge yet and I'm gonna open it up right here and you're gonna see that go down, boom. Now you see it go down and I'm gonna go back down underneath and open the high side and we're gonna pull vacuum from the high and low side. And now I'm going back here. I'm gonna, it even says open right on the top. And I'm gonna put it in the way it says open and that's gonna depress the valve core. And we're now pulling vacuum from the high side and the low side simultaneously. And I did inject dye into the system. You didn't see that before I pulled the vacuum. I injected uh, UV dye into this low side hose and this hose slopes down so I know my UV dye went in here and just went to the bottom of the hose and went down here it's not being sucked back out here and you see we're already down to 900 microns right now and we are falling steadily and I'm gonna get ready to assess. this is messed up because somebody already retrofitted and I explained this many times before in my videos if this had mineral oil in it and it's a good clean tight system when I pull a vacuum I get down below 500 mac microns usually within the first five ten minutes but when somebody does a retrofit on the system and they contaminated and gave it moisture herpes uh, they put in ester oil into the system to do their um, retrofit usually maybe they pumped in fresh gas or did they pump in contaminated gas off their recycling machine because they haven't changed their filter dryer in a couple years and they pump back in a lot of moisture or they're sloppy on their vacuum and so the ester oil i'm fighting trying to remove moisture out of ester oil out of the system so i'm screwed there's nothing i can do uh, once you contaminate a system it's pretty well contaminated that's the problem of the shop and the technician and their lack ability of knowledge or being cheap or being lazy so let me get on I'm gonna put the camera down this is long enough and it's way too long and we'll get to the next video and you see I have oil contamination in my micron meter here inside here I gotta clean it out because it's not reading the microns because my gauge is contaminated again but we can read it there